The following video is not endorsed by Dive Heart, Scuba Ventures, Dive Paradise, or Hotel Cozumel. This episode is very special and is close to my heart because the owner of Dive Paradise at the time of my last trip and who I got to meet at Beneath the Sea, Miss Renee Applegate, tragically passed away this past summer and this episode is dedicated to her in her memory. Rest in peace, Apple. <laughs> and welcome to a brand new episode of Lewis's Adventures. I'm Lewis, your host. In this episode, I'll be going back to Cozumel, Mexico for diving with Dive Heart once again. My guest stars will be my good friends, Jim Elliott, CEO and founder of Dive Heart, Dive Heart South Florida team lead, Wilmina Stanton, Miss Wheelchair California, Patricia Doshet, and others. Unlike last year's trip, which involved training, I didn't earn my Patty Advanced Diver or five specialties, which was a setback and a huge disappointment for me, but those will come another time in the future. This trip is about simply gaining experience in scuba diving. Good morning, I'm off to the Philadelphia International Airport with my mother to catch our plane to Atlanta, Georgia at Hartsfield Atlanta International Airport where we will board our flight to Cozumel once again. We've touched down in Cozumel. It feels good to be back here once again. I so look forward to diving the blue crisp waters of the Caribbean Sea again. We have arrived at Hotel Cozumel again. Oh, what a difference a year makes. Due to choppy seas, our plans took us to the southern point of the island where the waters were calm enough to go snorkeling, which I ended up doing with Valerie. While we were there, we also got to enjoy the beach, and then afterwards, we headed to the Mayan ruins, and it was an experience I will never forget. The last two days, we could not go diving because of choppy seas, and especially this morning, it was a little bit frustrating, but this afternoon, we finally did get the boat dives in at last, and I finally reached 20 dives. On day four, I got to dive with Ricky Sanchez, Mike O'Brien, or OB for short, and Steve. Not only was Ricky nice enough to, to shoot video of me using my camera, but Debbie also shot some video of me diving with them too. And on this dive, we got to see a green moray and a nurse shark. It's an experience I will never forget. We're about to embark on a second dive. I just did my first dive with a bottom time of 38 minutes. On day five, I got to do four dives in one day. Three of them were during the day, and the fourth and final one of that day was a night dive, which of course, there's no footage of that underwater. However, my friend Debbie was nice enough to shoot video of me doing swim throughs during the first two dives and I was diving with Mark and his fiance Shannon as my buddies and of course Debbie and my other friend Robin were also part of my group which Debbie was shooting the footage while diving with me. Well, I'll soon be embarking on my night dive. I'll let you all know how it goes. Well, 
Here are the interviews I was able to do. I'm here again with my pal Jim Elliott, the CEO of Die Hard, with a follow-up interview. Hi, Jim. Glad to see you again. It's How have be you here. been since the last time I was here with you? Can I ask you some brand new questions? Absolutely. Been very busy. What has Die Hard been up to this past year? What has Die Hard been up to this past year? Well, let me tell you. We have. This is our fourth trip to Cozumel, Mexico. We're training instructors from all over the world to come and join us. We are revising our training program, which is going to revolutionize adaptive scuba. We are close, keeping my fingers crossed, we're getting closer to uh, our goal of building the deepest warm water pool in the world. So that's very exciting in the Chicagoland area. That is question number two. What is the progress of your dream pool ah, that you've progress. talked about? Well, we, we've, we've really only presented the pool project to three different entities. One was a veterans hospital, and the proposal went all the way to Washington, uh, but it languished in Washington. The second was to um, a, someone that had a lot of land in the western suburbs of Chicago, and then the land got rezoned after we had been talking for a couple years, and they decided to go with a different project, which happens. And the third time, we talked to Rotarians in Aurora, Illinois, and they got very excited and introduced us to some developers, and that didn't work out, but we, we also got some publicity in conjunction with that relationship. and. Some other landowners stepped up and went to the city and said, we want to talk to Dive Heart, we want them to look at our land. So just before I came on this trip to Cozumel, Mexico, we talked to some landowners that we think are very, very, very good prospect. And that will be the first step. Then we need to vet the land and make sure it's, we can build a deep enough pool. And then we raise money. Other than dive trips, what are your favorite scuba diving conventions that you like to attend? Scuba diving conventions. Well, we go to DEMA. That's a big international dive show. We love Beneath the Sea. We love Our World Underwater. It's in Chicago. Beneath the Sea is in New Jersey. And Long Beach Show is also wonderful. That's the uh, scuba show there. And that's in, uh, right next to the aquarium. It's at the convention center in Long Beach. But this year we're also going to Dallas, the Dallas Dive Show. We're going to Tacoma. The, um, and I believe that's it for right now. But we love going to dive shows because we meet a lot of great divers and supporters. How many new adaptive divers have been certified this year alone, including on this current trip? Wow, that's the back of the house thing. It's like, like, like in the restaurant, when you walk into the restaurant, the guy that greets you and seats you, that's kind of like me. The back of the house is, does all the cooking. So basically, I would have to probably go to our people that, that manage all of our database stuff, our training program, to, uh, to assess that. But we have, we have weekly Dive Heart Scuba Experience programs. Sometimes we'll have as many as four in a week. Uh, we have 100 scuba tanks, and sometimes we're actually stretched to, to get enough uh, air for, for all the events that we have. And we do that uh, between now, usually between September and May, and then the summer is our open water time. And although we do do stuff with veterans and, and, and others with disabilities and over the summer as well. So. What is your favorite place in the world to dive or not other than Cozumel? Oh, now you took, you took the answer away from me. We love Cozumel. We love Hotel Cozumel and Dive Paradise because this is really the most cost-effective place for us to go in North America, in our part of the country anyway, in North America. And uh, Key Largo, I would say with Rainbow Reef, Key Largo, uh, they're the number one instructor training center probably in the world. And they, they are also uh, a very ambitious dive heart program, uh, five-star program, our first recognized five-star dive heart adaptive scuba program. And they, veterans can go on the GI Bill and use their military benefits to become dive heart instructors, and that's very exciting. Lastly, what advice do you have for future adaptive divers when it comes to wanting to dive, whether it's for therapy or adventure like me, to even wanting to make videos like me on platforms like YouTube? Well, I, I always encourage, I always encourage adaptive divers to follow the path that, that that their heart tells them to follow. So I know you, Lewis. I know what your 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 passion is about training and growing and diving. 
some people like marine biology and oceanography and marine uh, coral reef restoration. So we encourage them to follow that. Some want to become an instructor. We have a young lady whose parents are on this trip. It's amazing. It's amazing because the parents are on the trip, but the diver, the adaptive diver is not on the trip. So Stephanie started with us at a, at a, a Shriners Hospital Therapy Pool, and she has polio. And now she's an adult, and now she's an instructor, trained up through Dive Heart, been on several trips, and, and her parents were so fascinated by what she did, they wanted to experience it. And now they were able to try diving, and they want to get it and become certified as well. So it's very exciting. Thank you for allowing me a bit of your time for the interview and the advice you have to offer. It was a pleasure. You're welcome, and it was a pleasure having you, sir. I'm here with my friend Ricky Sanchez, who I met last year during the previous trip. Hi, Ricky. I'm here to ask you some questions. Are you willing to answer them? Yeah, absolutely. How did you get into scuba diving? Uh, I, uh, I wanted to go, get certified to go scuba diving because I had a trip planned to Bali in, uh, in 2014, February. So late 2013, I got certified in Monterey Bay, California. How long have you been diving for? I guess, yeah, since uh, the end of 2013, once I got certified. How'd you find out about Dive Heart, and how'd you get involved with them? I found out about Dive Heart through uh, Christina Bowman Jones and uh, Gordon Bowman Jones. Uh, they were a couple that I knew for, that I've known for years, and they were here uh, for a air show, and they actually saw a dive heart getting out of the getting out of the water and they were so intrigued by all the scuba equipment and the people with disabilities that they had to go inquire they wanted to see what it was all about so they met Jim Jim Elliott that day and then when they came back home from their trip they told me about it what has been your favorite place to dive here in Cozumel or anywhere else in the world uh, my favorite dive here is definitely uh, the Planet Car Caves. It's really cool. Um, there's a bunch of swim throughs I've been through with uh, the favorite time that I went was maybe last year with Karen Mitchell. She's one of our adaptive divers and uh, her and I we were cruising through all the swim throughs in the caves and it was just it was gorgeous. Are there any other hobbies you like to do besides scuba diving? Absolutely. Uh, I ride a motorcycle every day. I enjoy skydiving, flying airplanes, uh, I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie, so, you know. Lastly, what advice you, uh, lastly, what advice can you give for people with disabilities like mine or even those with physical disabilities when it comes to scuba diving? When it comes to scuba diving? Like adaptive divers, you mean? Yes. Just get out there and dive. Get out there and do it. Um, dive Heart is a great organization. We have great training programs. Uh, we're all very skilled individuals, and I mean, it, it's a blast. I would not be able to do the work that I do if it wasn't for the adaptive divers. So I say, give it a shot. If you're intrigued in it, give us a call. You know, we'd love to work with you. Thank you for allowing me a bit of your time for the interview and the advice you have to offer. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thanks, Louis. Hi, Jim and Gail. Hello. Hi, Lou. I was wondering, could I ask you some questions for my video? Absolutely. Yes. How did you both get involved with Dive Heart? Our daughter Stephanie, when she was younger, she was at Shriners Hospital and Jim Elliott was doing a Discover Scuba in the pool and asked if she'd be interested and she went in and that was it. We met Jim Elliott and it was history since then. What made you want to come on this trip? Well. First of all, it was a nice way to get away as a little vacation, besides being with a whole group of great people, and to help you guys out. It's a nice way to volunteer. And also see what um, Stephanie experienced. Right. When she came on this trip. See what it's like to scuba dive. How they prepared and got everybody ready. But they did, in general, just getting all the new divers out there. What made Stephanie want to become a scuba diver herself? Uh, since she's a little kid, she always wanted to. 
She always said she was going to grow up and be an underwater archaeologist when she was little. She always loved the water. Um, what advice you have for those who want to get into scuba diving, whether it's dive hard or not? Absolutely something you have to try at least once, because once you try it, you're hooked. <laughs> Thank you for your time. It was your pleasure. Thank you, Lou. Hopefully we'll see you a hundred more times. Hi, Debbie and Dale. Hi. Hi, Lewis. <laughs> hey, Lewis. I was wondering, can I ask you some questions for my video? Yes, you can. How did you two get into scuba diving? Oh, it's his brother's fault. Yeah, my brother got certified in college, and we were actually on a vacation to Mexico right here in Carmen de Playa, and we did a resort dive, and I got open water certified there, and I've been a nut since then. I love it. <laughs> and I said, oh, no way, I'm not diving. You guys are crazy to step off a perfectly good boat, breathe underwater. But you know what? I fell in love with the people and um, decided, I guess I'll try it. And I have to be honest, it took me about a year to get good at it, comfortable, but once I did, I love it. Now I love it. How long have you both been diving for? I've been diving since uh, 2010, so about seven years. And 2011 for me, so about six years. How did you both find out about Dive Heart? Well, this is something that uh, I wanted to do. I. And when I was teaching Patty classes, I taught some people with autism, post-traumatic stress, and I was looking for a better outlet to get my experience and my training better. I actually went to HSA and got trained, was not happy with my training. I met Jim at uh, Edema, and then I met Jim at uh, Tacoma local show and talked to him, researched it, and I'm so glad that I'm here and had an excellent training. When he was HSA, um, we asked all the questions like, well, what do you do? Where do you go once you're already uh, certified? You teach somebody that's adaptive, where do you take them? And they couldn't answer our questions. And when I talked to Jim um, at DEMA, we didn't have much time with him, but it was like, this sounds like a better deal. So then I went to the website, checked it out, and went, oh yeah, this is what we need to do. And here we are. Um, what is your favorite place in the world to scuba dive? Philippines. Yep, Philippines. Puerto Galera. Absolutely yeah. stunning. Yep. What was your favorite moment of this trip? Meeting all the adaptive divers, diving with them, learning from them, and the training was excellent. Yeah, love you guys. I really do. It's so much fun and to see you excel and have fun and hit new standards and new limits. It's so cool. And then I think the best underwater was that turtle barracuda combination. That was pretty cool. I was going to say, lastly, what advice do you have for those who want to get involved with scuba diving and who have disabilities and want to make videos on platforms like YouTube, just like me? I would tell any of them to not be afraid. Give it a shot. It's a, a beautiful world. 70% of the world's underwater and the freedom and the si and being quiet and listening. You would never regret it. You owe it to yourself to give it a chance, and the confidence that you would build would be amazing. And I would say pick a, a good instructor, someone that you can connect with and, and really feel safe with, and then uh, trust the instructor and go for it. Have a great time. It will change your life. Thank you for allowing me a bit of your time for the interview and the advice you have to offer. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Thank Louis. Thank you, Louis. <laughs> This is my new friend Valerie Perona from Chicago. Hello. Hi Valerie. Hi Louis. I like to ask you some questions for my video. Are you willing to answer them? Of course. What made you want to become a nurse? I wanted to help people. Very simple answer. All about helping people. I'm very blessed with what I have and I'd like to share that with others and help out in any way I can. What got you into scuba diving and how did you get involved with Dive Heart? Um, I got into scuba diving through Dive Heart and I started volunteering with them. They're a local organization, a uh, company out of Downers Grove, Illinois. 
and I am about 10 or 15 minutes from there, so it was very convenient to donate some time and effort. Um, I got to meet Jim and he kind of took me under his wing and showed me the program and I didn't turn back. So now I have recently become certified as a scuba diver for open water. Beginner diver, just like yourself, Louis. Thanks. And uh, looking forward to continuing, meeting some more people. What was your favorite moment of this trip? Well, that's a tough one. There have been a lot of moments that I will not forget. I have some pictures, like new friends, like our picture we took together in the Mayan ruins, right? Right. And, uh, yeah, I just look forward to making more memories with the group. What was your favorite dive that you did on this trip? Um, that's a tough one also. Maybe between the night dive, because I was a little more anxious about that one, but I had some good, uh, good instructors, good dive buddies that gave me confidence to continue. And then today, uh, I went on a more challenging, deeper dive and did some swim throughs, so that was, they probably tie for my favorites. Lastly, what advice can you give to those with disabilities who want to try scuba diving? Uh, I would defer to the, the dive heart motto or slogan, imagine the possibilities, that anything's possible, and if you set your mind to do something, you will do it, you will accomplish it. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Lewis. I'm here with my new friends Mackenzie and her boyfriend Nico. Hi, Mackenzie and Nico. I'm doing an interview for my documentary. Can I ask you both some questions? Yeah. How did you get into scuba diving? How did you find out about Dive Hard? Um, through Mar Rosemary and Josh. They introduced us to the pool. We go swimming in Arlington, Virginia. And then they told us about this trip and asked us if we'd like to come to some open water dives. So that's what, what do you like about being in Cozumel so far? Um, I like the weather. It's snowing back where we're from. So it's a nice break. And all the people. Any future plans that involve scuba diving? Um, yeah, um, hopefully we're invited back down with you guys to either the Keys or another trip down here to Cozumel. Um, really looking forward to diving with you guys again. Um, met a lot of cool people out here, so yeah, hopefully we can come out here with you guys one more time. When diving, what is it like to be without your wheelchair? Um, feel very free, and all the pain, if I have any back pain or anything, that goes away, and it's just cool seeing the underwater world, and the whole different world under there. Lastly, what advice can you give for people with disabilities like mine, or even those with physical disabilities when it comes to scuba diving? Um, that they should try it, even if they're nervous. I was nervous, but I tried it, and I loved it. And yeah. Thank you for allowing me a bit of your time for the interview and the advice you both have to offer. It was a pleasure. You're welcome. Thanks we'll a lot, Louis. You. I'm here with my new friend, Josh, who I met on the trip. Hi, Josh. I'm doing an interview for my documentary. Can I ask you some questions? Absolutely, Louis. How did you get into scuba diving? I got into scuba diving because of Rosemary out of the D.C. Dive Heart chapter. How did you find out about Dive Heart? Well, Rosemary told me about it, inviting me out to their big event in May, and I got to dive with Jim Elliott for the first time in the pool and fell in love with it. What do you like about being in Cozumel so far? The weather, first of all, it snowed when I left the Washington, D.C. area. It's snowing there right now, and we're in, in Mexico. We're in uh, we're enjoying ourselves on vacation. Any future plans that involve scuba diving? Absolutely. There's no doubt this is the sport that I would love to be a part of for the rest of my life. And I'm excited to uh, 
keep experiencing and learning new tricks underwater. When diving, what is it like to be without your wheelchair? Uh, it's my, my, my take on that is if there's a, an excuse to get out of my wheelchair, I'll do it. And I find sky, uh, scuba diving the perfect excuse to get out and enjoy a new, a new vantage point, a new perspective, and a, a new sport. Lastly, what advice can you give for people with disabilities like mine or those with physical disabilities when it comes to scuba diving? It's, uh, it's a scary sport. It is. It's, you're underwater, you're in a new place, but if you have the right attitude and the right creativity, there's no reason not to live life with adventurous wheels and adaptive diving with dive hard. You're, you're with the best hands in the world and there's nothing to fear other than having a good time. Thank you for allowing me a bit of your time for the interview and the advice you have to offer. It was a pleasure. Lewis, you're awesome. Well, despite the setbacks I had, like the 15 minute flight delay in Atlanta to two days of diving lost because of choppy waters, I'll never forget this wonderful experience of going back to Cozumel, Mexico once again to do more diving. Be sure to stay tuned for my st series about me playing Pokemon Go during this trip, along with the vlogs, which will be condensed into one short video, and my latest Stream to See review. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell for alerts of when I upload new content to the channel, especially those with disabilities similar to mine. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. As I always say, it's time for adventure.